Hey everybody, it's Katie. Today's video is about choosing your doctor. So congratulations, you're pregnant, and now you're like, cool, I've got a bun in the oven, but I've got to get it out, and how am I going to do that? So today we want to talk about five tips in choosing your pregnancy doctor, and here we call it OBGYN. So we're going to give you some tips on what that looks like and how best to make that decision. So my first tip in choosing your OB, and here, I, and I don't actually know if all around the world it's called an OB, but here it is called an OBGYN, so it's a doctor of obstetrics, I hope I said that right, and gynecology. And so those are the ones who, when you go to the hospital, those are the guys and gals who are officially okay to deliver your baby. So I don't know, in other parts of the world, I don't know if that's what it's called or not. But here, if I refer to an OB, that's what I mean. So the very first step, and first I should say that if I am talking specifically for this first step for people here in the United States, potentially other countries as well, but I don't know what insurance and what all that looks like for some of you in different countries. So I apologize if this isn't applicable in your neck of the in your neck of the world. <laughs> but here, um, at least in the US, for those of us who have insurance, um, probably one of the first steps is to look and see where your insurance company is going to pay for you to have a baby. It seems like, you know, it's like, well, here's a hospital. Why can't I have my baby here? Well, there's there's a lot of complications with insurance. So I Without going into all of that, I would just suggest that if you do have insurance, uh, the first thing to do would be find out where your insurance company is going to pay for you to have a baby. Because if you decide to go outside of that network, you could be, um, you could end up with paying a lot more than you would if you go somewhere in network. So again, for those of you who this isn't applicable for, I apologize, but that would probably be where I would f start off at first because I'm not made of money. <laughs> and I need to know where I'm going to best utilize the finances that I have and that my insurance company will partner with me in paying for this birth. <laughs> the second tip that I would give you now that we've gotten kind of the insurance situation taken care of, the second tip is to start asking your friends and acquaintances or people that you know who have had babies, start asking them who their doctor was. Now, if you live in a huge city and you've got friends from that are sprinkled all throughout, that might be a little more difficult because I, one of my best friends lives in LA and there's, I don't know, like a million hospitals there. And so for one of her friends who lives on this particular side of town, she might have gone with this hospital. And, you know, so it, that might not work. However, I am also aware that um, doctors can, in larger towns, can have um, delivery rights or whatever it is at different hospitals. So they could go to a different hospital technically if they wanted to. Um, but anyway, so the point is start asking around your friends and um, if you have a church group or a hobby group or anything like that, people at your gym, someone that you might know, start just asking around and saying, oh, you know, who, did you, who was your doctor and what did you like about your doctor? What's one thing you wish you could have changed about your doctor or the way things, you know, the way this person approached birth or, or whatever, but just start asking around and maybe start jotting down names um, so you have kind of this list. After you've asked the people that you really trust and like and know, then um, the next thing, which is what I did um, with my second, is that because we were in a new place, so I asked the people that I knew and then after that I took the, that list of names and I went to good old Google <laughs> and I started looking. And not so much that I was hoping Google would give me the answer, but what I was finding was an interesting pattern in some of the doctors because I had been told by more than a few ladies, well, you know, this particular doctor, uh, how do I how do I say it gracefully? <laughs> uh, don't use this particular doctor. <laughs> like, okay. And so what I started finding though was reviews that were saying kind of the exact same thing, like this doctor was pushy. Um, this doctor was amazing and was very kind and this doctor was really cool but didn't spend a lot of time with you. So I started to notice patterns and that was really helpful to have both recommendations from people that I knew and that I trusted but also recommendations from strangers who had, didn't, you know, they weren't in it for anything, didn't really care who read it. They were just giving you their opinion. So ask around, get a good list of names going. Tip number three. Now, 
let me real quick before I jump into tip number three, uh, some of you who maybe are thinking like, well, I kind of want a home birth or I want to do a birthing center. Awesome. Um, I, I actually did both of those. Um, this video is actually m more specifically targeted to those mamas who have chosen or who have made the decision that I want to birth in a hospital. And what I, my hope is that I'm going to, in this video, that we'll be able to kind of arm you with um, questions and a game plan and try to help you figure out what hospital, what doctor, well, not what hospital, but what doctor and what that looks like in choosing a doctor. So for those of you who are doing a different type of birth in a different place, this may or may not be so applicable for you. But okay, so back to tip number three is look around where you live and figure out what hospital is closest to you. Now, um, as far as big cities go, like if you live in LA and your hospital that's closest to you, maybe that's not your network. I, I don't know exactly how all this works. And as a confession, I haven't ever lived in a huge city. When I birthed my first, I lived in a town of give or take 400,000 and there was uh, two hospitals. And so, I mean, when it came time, when it came right down to it, they were about the same distance, you know? So anyway, but for those of you who live in a bigger place, you might wanna figure out which hospitals are closest because I can think of nothing more horrifying and horrible than being stuck in traffic and labor. <laughs> I am pretty sure that's the most awful thing I can think of. That would not be good. So figure out what's closest to you because you're going to want that convenience. The next tip is going to be tour the hospital. Just about every hospital I have ever looked at offers a tour. They will, because they want, they want you to come there and of course they want you to be comfortable too. Like nobody wants to just roll up to a hospital and have a baby when you have no idea what you're walking into. And I think that they've recognized that that is going to help ease, <laughs> ease the stress level of a mom coming in to deliver a baby. So um, most places you can get on their website or you can make the call and say, hey, can I come in and look? And that will give you the option to walk around, get the feel of it. Um, see what if you're interested in like birthing tubs or whatever and I don't actually even know if they do that in hospitals anymore but it'll give you an idea of what is offered they could probably show you or at least point out if they have a NICU or, or whatever they'll be able to show you what's there they'll be able to explain like here's the room that you know we'll check you into this is a birthing room these are the rooms that you recover in and stay in and it's nice to have an idea of where you're going to be um, because doesn't feel very safe when you're in this vulnerable place of birthing a child to go someplace that you've never been before and that's that just doesn't feel so great. So it's, it's good to go and get that tour and figure out where you're going to be. And another thing too is it gives you a good opportunity to kind of get the, the feel for a place, I guess, if you will. I am a firm believer in the way, the way something makes me feel or a place that it makes me feel. Now, maybe that sounds, woo I don't know. But I have been to hospitals that just don't feel very good. Um, and I, likewise, I've been to hospitals that are like, okay, you know, it's clean, it's bright, it's, it's all good. Like, but, but it, anyways, it'll give you an idea of how, how, how it feels, what it looks like, and what it might be like if you were to deliver there. Now, tip number five is going to be, obviously, meet the providers. Now, I would, wouldn't settle for just meeting one. Um, I would find maybe your top three and call the offices or wherever it is if they're at the hospital or if they have their own private practice. Many of them have their own practice. Call and find out if they do, I don't know, a lot of offices call them different things, but I've heard a, a meet and greet or a, just a, you know, a quick meeting. And some, some or many of the OBs will offer a 15 minute appointment where you actually get to meet them and talk to them because again, I, I mean, I don't. I think that they're probably recognizing that not everyone is going to mesh well. There will be doctors that just won't be my cup of tea, and that's okay. Um, they probably feel that way about some of their patients. <laughs> it's okay. So it's a good um, opportunity to have just a really quick meeting. Like, do I like this person? Do I want to actually make a full-on appointment and start to establish care with this person? Underneath meeting the provider is going to be go prepared go with a list of questions because 
just because they're an OB doesn't mean that, like I said, doesn't mean that they're going to be your cup of tea or they're going to fit well. Some of the questions that I would suggest taking in if you're not if you're if you're not sure or if you're wondering what should I say or what should I ask some of the questions that were important for me when I met my with with one of the women who was potentially going to be an OB for me um, I had a list of questions because I needed to know like how do you feel about these particular things and so let me read you the list really quick I have it written down here and I'm going to read off of my iPad because I won't remember them all <laughs> but First of all, it's important to understand what is their birthing philosophy? What is it? What is a laboring woman? What does that look like for them? And how do they feel about that? So it's kind of important to sort of understand what's their philosophy and what's their style. And then ask them their thoughts on vaginal birth versus cesarean. Is they do they have a are they kind of eh, you know, either way is okay or are they more like, you know, we're really hoping we really want you to go in with the vaginal birth and we only move to a c-section is absolutely necessary you know some of you might be listening thinking what you know I thought that we're moving away from that well I think that as a society we are trying to move away from unnecessary c-sections however that's a good question to ask because unless you ask you won't know so ask them about c-sections and what are their thoughts on that vaginal birth that type of thing and then pain management options. Now, whether you want to go in and you're like, oh, I'm getting the epidural, I'm doing it and I'm happy about it, or you're like, I'm going in and I'm doing it all natural and I'm happy about it. Either way, it's important to know what are the options that are on the table, what are their thoughts about them, and just kind of understanding that process of what if I say no at first and then I decide later I want to, like, you know, asking those questions and what their thoughts are on that and what they're able to offer. Another question that I had that was a big one was episiotomy versus a natural tear. And I mean, if you haven't had a baby, some of these questions are like, what? Eek! I don't like that and I don't either. But it's important to ask those questions because if you would rather have the episiotomy, then you probably should know if they're down with that or if you'd rather tear naturally if that happens. It's important to know these things because you don't want to be in the room in that moment and find out that this is their, their particular way. So that's an important. And so I guess mostly just in meeting with these, and, and sometimes it's hard to tell from just this, you know, just this 15 minute meeting, but I think that you can get a, a pretty good impression. But it's important to find out, does this person, does this OB's birthing style fit with mine? And do I feel comfortable inviting this person into my process? Because birthing a child is a very intimate, vulnerable time in your life. And you want to make sure that the people who are on your team make you feel good and make you feel comfortable. And having the right doctor is huge. I want to tell you a really quick story. I, with my first daughter, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, my Most people that I knew had done hospital births. There was only one person, one of my really good friends. She had just had a birth center birth. Um, but other than that, everybody did hospital births. And so I, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go tour the hospital and I'm going to meet with, um, I was seeing one um I was seeing an advanced nurse practitioner and she said well this is the OB that I refer you know this person's really wonderful and so on and so forth so I went to the hospital and I also made an appointment to visit with this OB and I I didn't love the hospital it wasn't there wasn't anything wrong with it but it just it didn't feel like it didn't fit into what I envisioned birth would look like for me and then I met with the OB and it became very evident that our birthing styles were vastly different. This was a wonderful person and I know that they cared a great deal about their patients and birth. And um, But as I asked questions, those questions that I just gave you, like I said, it, it became evident that we just saw things very differently. And I, uh, after I left, I decided at that point that I would do a, that I would go to a birth center because it it, I felt like it meshed a little bit more with what I wanted. Then second time around with my second daughter, I was in a new town and so I, I found, I did all the steps, I found out insurance and I asked around the, very, the few people that I knew and so I, I ended up finding a doctor, it was a, a, man, a male doctor, which I never thought that I would be comfortable with, but he was, he was wonderful. He was the kindest man. I, he's, he's great. His bedside manner was terrific. 
um, he was totally unfazed by all of my slightly hippie requests. You know, he was just like, okay, you know, he was willing to let me do things the way that I wanted to. <laughs> he did have one, there was one thing that he wasn't okay with, and, but he was very respectful when we talked about it and we came to an agreement. And I felt 100% totally comfortable going into the birth process with him, even in the hospital, which I had never had a hospital birth. Um, and I would have been just fine delivering with him at the hospital. It, it did end up happening that way, but that was not a choice. <laughs> the baby just showed up. Had I been able to make it to the hospital, I would have felt 100% comfortable with him and with um, being in the hospital. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to choose that. <laughs> if you have anyone in your life who is pregnant and trying to figure out just exactly where it is that they want to have this baby, or if they're leaning more towards the hospital but they're just not quite sure what to do, I would be honored if you'd consider sharing it if you found it helpful or if you think that it might be helpful for them. I know that when you get pregnant it's really exciting but then all of the like the to-do list can kind of hit you hard and it's like oh my gosh what am I gonna do? So I would love to I would love for you to share it if you think that it might help someone alleviate a little bit of that stress of trying to figure things out. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. That's always really encouraging for me, and I appreciate it. Um, and if you are a subscriber, awesome, thank you. If you're not, if you click on the little subscribe button, then you will become part of the KT Files family. And if you, um, if you are a subscriber and you click on the bell icon, it'll actually, you'll get notifications of when we do new videos, which is every week. And we talk about all kinds of stuff, mostly babies and kids and that type of thing. We also have a Facebook page. If you would like to join us over there, that would be awesome. We post daily content and we'd love to have you join us in that area. So that's it, you guys. I hope that you're doing exceedingly well. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope that you join us next week for our next video. Bye.